evening, everyone. How are you doing tonight? My name, if you do not know yet, is Caleb Lyle Kinsey, and I am so glad that you all are here tonight for Ignite, where you can be who God has created you to be. That's what we are all about, is for you to be who God has made you to be, which is really cool. Tonight, well, before we get into it, let's pray, and then we'll, we'll dive in. Dear Jesus, we love you so much. Thank you for your death on the cross. Thank you for, for your love for us, God. I pray for this message. I pray that you fill me up with your spirit, that I can overflow your truth to these students and leaders, God, that, that we can have our eyes, our ears, and our hearts open to hear, truly hear, God, what you have to say to us here this evening. We love you so much, Jesus, and all God's people said, amen. Tonight we're talking about this idea called truth, over trend. Truth is greater than trend. The, the truth is better than, is bigger than the trends that we see come and go. There are a ton of trends, and I did a little bit of researching about trends um, to kind of refresh my memory a little bit about some of the dumb and awesome and cool and funny trends. There's kind of two different trend styles, I would say. There is the, like, action, do, active type trend. And then there's the, like, speech or communication word t trends that people use. So a couple of the, like, active challenge trends that I called to memory were, were one of them was the, the, the Kylie Jenner lip challenge. Remember that one? You, like, sucked down a bottle and you got your lips really big. And you're like, nah, 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 right? The Kylie Jenner lip challenge. Super weird. It didn't last very long. There is the cinnamon challenge when you had to try and eat like a spoonful of cinnamon without dying, basically. There was the one that lasted too long, the dab, right? Terrible trend. That one lasted way too long. There was, I don't know if you guys know, but there was this thing where they were going to like storm Area 51. Do you guys remember that a couple years ago? Area 51, there was like this huge thing, we're going to storm Area 51, they won't be able to hold us all off. And then like when the day came, I think like three people showed up or something, right? Like it was a trend, it didn't last very long, but they were like, it was the talk of the town. There's some, some like uh, clothing or like fashion trends, there's like the mom jeans, right? There's like the mullet, when people are rocking the mullet, that's a trend that's starting to come back. Oh boy. There is the, 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 the mannequin challenge. You guys remember that one where you just like pretend to be a mannequin? I thought that one was fun. Uh, the mannequin challenge. The Kiki, do you love me? Are you shining? So you never, never leave from inside. Like when they're running outside their car. You remember, everybody remembers that one. People were crashing. It was stupid. The invisible box where you tried to stand on an invisible box and like, jump over it. There's the milk crate challenge where you had to like walk up the milk crate. That one was just recently. That one was stupid because people were getting hurt all over the place. You had the really, really kind of, you had to question the people who did the Tide Pod challenge where you're like eating the Tide Pods, right? That's stupid, right? The trend didn't last very long because literally people were dying because they were eating Tide Pods. Like, you don't do that. It wasn't good. There's the cold water challenge. There's a bunch of challenges that come and go that people get sucked into. And yet they can really, although the trend lasts only a moment, the effects of them can last for a long time. Like, if you do the, the milk crate challenge and you break your arm because you fell off the top box, like, that can affect you for your whole life. And, and not just the, the challenges, but then there's, the, like, the phrases there's the no cap and cap, like we talked about the last couple weeks a little bit, right? I'm not lying, no cap, right? Like that whole thing. It's not really a thing anymore. Last year, big thing. This year, like I haven't heard one person say it yet. Um, the goat, that's one we're still living in. Oh, he's the goat, greatest of all time. Yeah, the goat, right? That one we're still kind of working through. There's the, the stop being such a Karen, Karen, she's such a Karen. Oh my goodness, Karen. And then one of the other favorites, the Kyle. Yeah, Kyle. Oh, the crazy Kyle. Drinking Mountain Dew and doing crazy burnout. Oh, Kyle. Right? Like, that was a thing. It's still a thing. It's not a Caleb, it's a Kyle. Very, very clear. It is a Kyle. 
There's lit, fleek, don't be such a boomer, right? Like that one I think is kind of funny. Uh, a boomer, there's YOLO, there's the, the glow up of, oh, I was so ugly, but now look at me, I've glowed up and look how beautiful I am. I think that one's dumb because I don't know about you, but like I've always been beautiful. So I'm like, I was like glowed up and I just keep like glowing up or I don't know, like, <laughs> I thought it was funny. There's the phrase, everybody's doing it everybody's doing it, so why wouldn't I do it? Like, everybody's doing this thing. Everybody's doing this thing. Why don't I do it? It's a trend where we get sucked in. And there's some trends that are blatantly stupid. Some obvious ones where it's like, that's really dumb. I'm not going to do that. Point in case, the Tide Pod Challenge. That one's pretty like, I should probably not do that. But then there's these other trends. There's these other things that happen in life that are more subtle that are more of like an undercurrent kind of just pulling. And you maybe don't even realize that you're being pulled into a trend because it's so subtle and it's just like, oh, it's nothing, nothing big. Has anybody ever been caught in a riptide before? You guys not know what a riptide is? It's like in the ocean, there's like, it's called a riptide. It like, there's an undercurrent where if you're not a strong swimmer, it can, or even if you are a strong swimmer, it can literally pull you out into the middle of the ocean. And if you try and fight it, this weird current, it'll literally, you can't do it. You have to like swim along the coast out of the rip current and then swim in. So, and the weird thing is, is you don't even realize you're in one until you look back to shore and you're like, that's a long way away. I know what this is like because I once was caught in a rip current. Um, it was spring break of my uh, sophomore, junior, maybe year of college. And me and some buddies drove out to California to visit my brother. And we went to a beach unbeknownst to us. This was a pretty like expertise, like surfing beach because the waves were actually pretty big and we didn't know that we were just like oh, we'll go to the beach woo and my brother had a boogie board which is where you like lay on it you like surf in kind of on the waves and Caleb being Caleb I was like I'm gonna go out to the big waves because I saw some surfers out there ways and I was watching these surfers and what I noticed is when a wave would come if they weren't gonna like ride the wave they'd like duck under into the wave so they wouldn't get carried too far in and then they'd like keep paddling out so it's like like, I can do that. And I'll like duck under a wave, like swim out a little ways. Next wave, duck under it, kind of swim out a ways. And I kid you not, I turn around to like look at shore and the people were little itty bitty people on the shore. This rip current had taken me so far out that like the people looked really tiny and I was like, oh boy. I didn't even know that I was pulled out. I didn't even know that I was caught in a current pulling me out. And I think that is exactly what happens for us today with trends. Sometimes these trends, they just pull us in and we start to believe them as true, even if they're not. And we don't even realize that we're caught in them and they just pulling us out. They're messing with our minds and we're like, yeah, that's true, that's real. Tonight, we're talking about this phrase, follow your heart. Has anyone ever heard the phrase, follow your heart? If you're trying to make a decision in life or this big like, oh, I'm at a fork in the road, I don't know what to do, and you ask someone for advice, and they're like, follow your heart. Oh, that's so nice. Follow your heart. Oh, that just gives me little butterflies. Like, oh, I'm going to follow my heart. On the surface... It really seems like some good advice, right? Follow your heart. Your heart is like who you are. Your heart isn't going to steer you wrong, is it? Like your heart has your best intentions in mind. And it, why would it, it wouldn't lead you astray, would it? Would it? Would it? I was excited to do that. Would it? Follow your heart. Our heart is this place where we think it's good. Oh, my heart's good. It has my best intentions in mind. And yet it's this little current, I think, that starts to pull us out that says, you're good. You're good enough. Like you're, you're, you can make the best decision, the best overall decision for your life. You have the power. And we start to believe it. Who knows what this is? A one dollar 
Sir Bill, well done. Very astute observation, high schoolers. Well done. This is Dollar Bill. Um, there's some people in the world called counterfeiters that try to make fake money. Okay, you maybe heard of them. They try and make fake money so that they can like go buy something and then get it for free, basically, because the money was fake. And these counterfeiters are really, some of them are really, really good at making fake money. And there's people called federal agents that are like at banks sometimes and like that are trained in how to discover and how to find fake money. And I looked into this a little bit because I'd heard this and I was like, uh, and I looked into it and it seems like it is true. Do you know how they study to know counterfeit money? Does anybody know how they study? What are they doing as they're studying, trying to figure out what fake money is? He's smart. That's why he's one of our leaders. Bah, boom. They study the real thing. So if they want to know what a counterfeit dollar bill looks like, they're not going to look at counterfeit dollar bills. They're only going to look at the real thing. Because once they know the real thing, once they know what the true dollar bill is, once they truly know the ins and the outs and exactly what a true dollar bill should look like, then when a counterfeit or a fake one or an imposter dollar bill comes by, they can be like, fake, fake news, get out of here, that's not a real dollar. They can tell because they know what the real one is. And I think that just like those federal agents study the real, the true dollar to know when a fake one comes by, I think for you and for me, that's the same for us. I think if we're, if we're Jesus followers, which if you're not, that's okay. We're glad that you're here. As Jesus followers, we want to, to study what the true thing is. And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You see, when we study God's word, God's true word, this here is truth because God is truth. And God spoke through people. God worked in people to write this. So this is literally God's work right here. This is what truth is. When we study, when we know what the Bible says, when we know what truth is, when something comes our way like a statement, follow your heart, we can know pretty quickly that actually that's maybe not true. Let's, let's, let's kind of test that against what the Bible says about our hearts. And not just that phrase, but anything. There's people who say a lot of things on social media. There are a lot of celebrities who say a lot of things. And just because you're famous or just because you can speak does not mean everything you say is true. <laughs> if you haven't realized that yet, just because someone says something doesn't mean it's true. And we should take everything that we hear, including what Caleb says on a Wednesday night at Ignite, including what pastor says on a Sunday morning. And we should always go back and say, is that what the Bible says? Is that what the truth is? And there's going to be times where we're going to be like, yep, that makes sense. That equals what the Bible's saying. And there's going to be other times where you might be like, I don't know. I don't know if that's totally true. That kind of seems like a counterfeit statement. That kind of seems like a fake, unreal thing. So follow your heart. What does the Bible say about following your heart? Well, here's what the Bible says about your heart. Matthew 6, 21 says this. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So whatever you value most in life, that is what your heart thinks is the most important. So if you value your, your significant other, if you value money, if you value fame, if you value good grades, if you value relationships with friends, if you value something, that means that's where your heart is. And if you're like me, I don't always value Jesus. Actually, to be honest, I, I rarely put my treasure as Jesus being my treasure. You see, there's, there's so many things that take up my time that I don't sit around all day long and I don't just read my Bible and I don't just pray and I don't just and talk about Jesus all day long. I value other things and that means that my heart isn't truly in line with what God's plan is. 
Proverbs 4.23 says this, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do comes from it. And if you're like me, everything that I do isn't always God honoring. There's things that I say, there's things that I do, there's things that I think that aren't really very good. They're pretty messed up. They're pretty sickening. They're pretty sad things that I sometimes do. And that shows a reflection of what my heart is. Is that what you want to follow? Luke chapter 6 says, for the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. How's your language? Are you going around school cussing here, cussing there, cussing up a storm? Are you saying things that are mean and hateful and, and filled with, with hatred? Are you saying things that are nice and kind? Again, if you're like me, I, I say a lot of things that I wish I could take back. I'm not always saying things that are loving and uplifting and encouraging. I sometimes use my, my words to hurt other people, and that shows a reflection of what my heart is. Is that what I want to follow? Matthew 15, 19 says this, For out of the heart come evil thoughts, come murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, and slander. That's all the stuff that's in our hearts. Not looking so good for the heart. Follow your heart. Do you really want to follow something that's filled with evil, that's filled with slander, that's filled with sexual immorality, that's filled with murder? Is that what you want to be following in this life? I don't. <laughs> like, that's not what I want to follow. I want to follow something that's like good and awesome and uplifting and encouraging. But our hearts are this place of kind of evil. And, and yet it seems so easy for us to think, man, I just want to follow my heart. I have this big decision. Do I, do I dump the boyfriend or, or do I ask this girl out? Do I, which, which classes do I sign up for? Which college should I attend? I don't know which way to go. What do I do? Follow your heart just seems like it makes sense. And yet when we line it up with what the Bible says, it's kind of a, it's a, it's a counterfeit dollar. It's not real. It's not a true statement. So you might be thinking, well, if I'm not supposed to follow my heart, what am, what am I supposed to follow? Like, how do I, how do I know? Because guess what, Caleb? I still have to make a decision on which college I'm going to go to. Caleb, I still have to make a decision on which classes. I still have to make a decision. Should I ask this person out or should I not be with this person? Caleb, I still have to make a decision of where I'm going to eat tomorrow for breakfast. Follow your gut. <laughs> Don't actually. Right? Like, we still have hard decisions that we need to make in this life. What do we do? I think, again, we got to go to what the Bible says. What is the Bible telling us? What are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to live our lives? And in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, it says this. Listen close. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, God, and he will make your path straight. We are called not to follow our hearts, but we're called to follow God's heart. What is God's plan for our lives? Following God's plan, his will for our lives is good. It is, it is encouraging. It is filled with joy and mercy and forgiveness. When we follow our heart, it, it's, a, it's a lot of evil and selfish things. When we follow God's plan, it is good. I want to be very clear, though. Just because it's good does not mean that it's easy. Following God's plan for our life, following God's will, is not an easy thing. It's not promised to be easy. It's not promised that the road's going to be without any problems or issues or difficulties. It's going to be tough. But I tell you what, following God's plan for our life is so, so good. And it's truth. Following what God says and doing his will, being on his path and saying, God, what do you want? God, what do you want for my life? Which college do you want me to be at, God? Which person do you want me to be in a relationship with, God? God, where, where am I supposed to go? What am I supposed to do next with my life? I don't know, God. What am I supposed to do? And when we seek after God's heart, we see some really amazing, beautiful things happening. 
And, and when we look at God's heart, God is in the business of making hearts clean. See, Psalm 51 verse 10 says, create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. See, God is in the business of taking our hearts and scrubbing them clean so that they are not only filled with evil, but they are also filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with Jesus himself so that we can go and make a difference in this world. God wants to be in a relationship with each and every single one of us. He wants to make your heart pure. He wants to be in a relationship with you. And there's a, a true statement that I want to tell you tonight that isn't just a trend. It's not a counterfeit. It's not a, a fake thing. It's, it's the real deal. Jesus loves you. The very Son of God loves you for who you are. All of your past mistakes, all of your brokenness, all of the things you've ever done wrong, even your broken, brokenness right now, Jesus still loves you. He proved that he loved you by dying on a cross. He literally died so that your sins, your dirty, gross, disgusting, evil hearts, my gross, disgusting, evil heart could be made clean because of Jesus. Jesus looks at you and he says, I love you so much. It's not a trend. It's not something that just happens and then tomorrow it's something different. And he says, actually, I hate you. You disgust me. No, no, no. Jesus says, I love you, and it's true. Jesus says, I care about you, and it's true. Because he proved it. In Hebrews chapter 13, it says, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You see, trends, they come and they go. They're here for a week. They're, they're gone the next. They're here for a year. They're here for a couple years and they fade away. But Jesus' truth that he speaks to you, that I want you to hear and truly hear tonight, is that he loves you. And if you don't realize that, if you can't understand that, and guess what? I, I can't understand that. It's hard. It's like, why would God love me? But he promises that he does. And he wants to be in a relationship. He wants to be in the community with you and that is the greatest relationship that we can ever have. A relationship with the Jesus, with the Savior of the world who died because he loves us. But he didn't stay dead. See, our Jesus, our, our Savior is not a dead Savior. But he survived. He, 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 he rose from the dead, conquering. So that he could then pronounce to you, he could say to you, being alive and well, and he says, I love you. And I'm going to a place to prepare for you. That is truth. That is not fake. That is not counterfeit. That's the real deal. Jesus loves you. Can you guys pray with me, please? Dear Jesus, thank you for your love for us. Thank you, Jesus, for, for, for dying on a cross. Jesus, for, for truly looking at us and saying, I love you so much. I care about you so much. Jesus, you say that to each one of us here tonight. Help us to know that. Help us to, to, to surrender, to submit our path to you, God, and to trust in you, not our own hearts, but help us to follow your heart, Jesus. Not our own desires, but help us to follow your path for us. It's not gonna be easy, but Jesus, a path that is with you that we get to walk hand in hand in this journey of life is going to be so good. And we get to walk this path, this journey together with these friends and these amazing people. We love you so much, Jesus. And all God's people said, amen. Amazing.